Once upon a time, not so long ago, most of Bangkok was forest. At the turn of the century, there were over 100,000 domesticated elephants in Thailand. Today, of course, it's a very different story. Driven from the deforested countryside, many elephants drift into the city with their mahouts, looking for work, mostly looking for handouts. To me, it's very disturbing to see these elephants in the city. Their mahouts, who genuinely love them, would prefer not to bring them to the city, but they have to bring them to the city because there's no other way for them to make any money. Any day of the week, any time of day, we're bound to see Thais coming to pay their respects to the god, even if they don't have time to stop. The elephant is referred to by Jesus, Brahma, and Buddha as an animal which is both gentle, strong, and wise. I first became interested in elephants at the age of three. I was always crazy about elephants, drew pictures of elephants, collected elephant things, but somehow, in my case, it carried through into adulthood. Fifty years ago, this was a wonderfully varied landscape. There were all sorts of trees, teak, other hardwoods, and roaming through the jungles were wild elephants, normally in groups of 20 or 30. They were literally everywhere. People probably didn't even lift their heads when they saw an elephant go by. Today, though, there are only two to three thousand wild elephants left in Thailand, and even these few are vanishing very quickly. Elephants are creatures of the forest. The forest is the place of shelter. As the forests have been decimated, sources of elephant employment have gone as well. And this poses a great threat, primarily because it means that the people who take care of elephants, who are by and large very poor people, are not making any profit from their elephants. This is the Young Elephant Training School near Lampang in northern Thailand. It belongs to the Forest Industries Organization, a government organization which owns 92 elephants. Most of the elephants will stay at the school until they're 15, maybe even 20 years of age, because it's only when they become 20 or so that they can do a full day's work in the forest. If you could imagine raising horses or raising a cow until it was 15 before you could get any milk from it, you begin to realize what an incredible investment in time and energy raising elephants is. Normally, a mahout will work with the same elephant for many, many years. Very often, when a boy becomes old enough, he will be assigned a particular elephant, and they will work together, possibly their whole working lives. For both man and elephant, for both species, the major life events happen at the same time. Adolescence and puberty happen at the same time. The beginning of the working life happens at the same time. And retirement happens at about the same age say 60 years old, and the same with death. During the course of this working together, they become intimately familiar with each other. It's probably as close as a husband and wife relationship in many ways. The mahout will know when the elephant's having an off day, the elephant will know when the mahout's having an off day. Uh -huh. 
This elephant is over 30 years old, and they've worked together for over 20 years. She's saying her name is Pang Wai and that she's very good natured. Can you eat my cap? Sometimes, though, she's ill natured. Mm. Oh. He says when he quits working, he'll miss the elephants for two or three months, but then he'll forget the elephants. I asked him if the elephant would miss him, and he said she probably would for some months, but then she'd forget him. Elephants obviously love water. They love to play and splash around. But looking at their shape, one would think that they might be very bad swimmers. It looks as though they would sink to the bottom. In fact, they're amongst the very best of all animal swimmers. They can go at least six hours without stopping. They'll use their trunks like a snorkel. But even so, when they're moving at speed, they'll sink quite a ways under the water. nice and clean, the first thing they'll do is either roll on the ground or pick up dirt in their trunks and throw it all over themselves. To elephants, dirt is just like talcum powder. Elephants are very fidgety creatures. They never stand still. When we think of them, we think of them as being very quiet. But if you look at an elephant, they're always moving. The ears are flapping, the trunk is moving around. They'll scratch. They're never still. The trunk is an amazing bit of anatomy. It has many, many different uses. It's used to smell, to drink, to bathe, to establish contact with another elephant, to touch affectionately. An elephant might be able to lift two or three hundred pounds with its trunk. So it's an amazing combination of strength and delicacy at the same time. There are three basic ways to control an elephant. The first and the most obvious is the use of the hook, where touching the skin in a particular place will cause the elephant to perform a particular action. The second way is just general body movement, where the mahout will, by kicking behind the ear, or even more subtly, leaning his body in a certain direction, indicate that the elephant should perform a certain task. But probably the most interesting kind of command are voice commands. Most elephants that work in the forest will, will understand, say, 35 to 40 command words. Back up, lift your left foot, lift your right foot, kneel, lift up the object, whatever. Every day for most of the year, the young elephants at the training school will put on a performance for tourists. The tourists are always delighted. 
I wonder what the elephants are thinking. They do it so often and they're so clever that I often feel they're bored. Looking at this performance, it's very easy to see only the entertainment aspects of it. But it's important to remember that this is training for the actual work situation, and that all of these elephants will spend most of their lives at work hauling logs in the forest. A rough rule of thumb is that an elephant can pull about half of its weight. So a really big elephant, say a five-ton elephant, can pull a log of two or three tons. An elephant's pulling has one very special feature. Because their feet are so big and soft, they can pull through the forest, through very crowded trees, doing minimal damage to the environment. And this is probably their primary value in a modern age. to imagine a time when elephants in Asia will be perhaps no different than elephants are in Europe or North America or Japan. Exotic zoo creatures, something of the past, but no longer a part of everyday life. They will no longer exist. <laughs> <laughs> 